Johnny Juzang, a young man who led UCLA back to prominence in college basketball, has declared for the NBA draft. Eh. So where does this leave the Bruins because they were once the preseason number one? Not anymore. And does Juzang actually have an NBA future? Good morning. I'm James. This is your daily dose of sports and start for the greatest sports city in the world, Los Angeles. This is Faithful Angelinos. It is April 21st, 2022, and I am still broadcasting from my glorified cell in Omaha, Nebraska. We had a couple of people subscribe yesterday. Thank you for getting in on the ground floor. If you like the content that we've been putting out, then by all means, clickety-clack the like button. Clickety-clack the subscribe button. There's a notifications bell. Hit that. It'll let you know when we drop a new video, which is usually between 9 and 10 a.m. every day. Sharing is caring. Let people know we exist. And yes, by all means, comment. I am not God. I do not know everything. Now, I'm creating this video a little early because, unfortunately, the people upstairs have decided to river dance wearing steel tip boots. Not exactly a comfortable night. Let's get to the scoreboard. The Dodgers had a very successful homestand. They went 6-1, and one, and they also defeated Atlanta 5-1 to one to cap it. They'll be in San Diego over the weekend. LAFC at the U.S. Uh, US Cup, they defeated Orange County 5-1. to one. Today, meanwhile, the Chicago Blackhawks are going to face the L.A. Kings, the Kings on the precipice of, of uh, qualifying for the Stanley Cup playoffs. The notes. I mentioned LAFC a moment ago. Now, to me, the big story, aside from Johnny Juzang declaring, LAFC has agreed on a contract extension with Carlos Vela through 2023. This matters. This matters a lot. Carlos Vela has scored 61 goals in 93 regular season games. Now, it's a DP deal. There were columnists for MLS who were suggesting, well, maybe you can see if you can sneak in something a little cheaper and keep that DP spot open. Nah, that wasn't going to happen. Nor should it. Okay? I say this all the time. I'm a Galaxy supporter, but I try to call things straight down the middle. The LA Galaxy have an identity from all the players that they've had in their past, whether it was Donovan, uh, Beckham, Keane, etc. Carlos Vela is LAFC's identity. You don't let that guy go. So, you know, they did the right thing. The Dodgers, I feel like I jinxed them. A couple of days ago, I was talking about how Andrew Heaney might round out this rotation and make it elite. Now he's on the sideline for seven days with a shoulder injury. Whoops. It showed, it, it, we don't know if it's a big deal. The Dodgers don't think it is. They're not even going to get the guy an MRI. We'll find out. Tyler Anderson is scheduled to start Saturday in San Diego. Oscar De La Hoya, boxing legend. He has a legal matter. A tequila company executive has accused him of sexual assault in a civil suit. There were multiple incidents that are alleged. One took place in Mexico, another took place in Los Angeles. I have no opinion. I wasn't in either of those places at the time. UCLA football. I'm starting to wonder if the Bruins actually care about football. You know, I mean, they bring in all these new defensive coaches and you sit there and you think, OK, now they're going to try and figure out how to do some things differently and, and have a defense that matches the offense. And everybody on the defense is like, now nah, we out. They lost another player to the transfer portal. Defensive lineman Odua is aboard. This guy was supposed to start. He's the second guy to use the transfer portal during spring practice. The other one was a linebacker, he, uh, Caleb Johnson. There are just a lot of holes up front in the front seven for UCLA. How are they going to get pressure on the quarterback? Unless they get some amazing transfers coming in, we're not, I'm not hearing anything about that. The LA Rams in a move that I adore. Every year they try to upgrade what they're doing with the NBA draft in terms of how they're going to party. Last year they had a house overlooking the waves in Malibu. This year they've upgraded to the Hollywood Hills. And they're not even drafting until day three. 
what are you doing, guys? <laughs> There's no other thing. Let me tell you, you know what they're doing? I'll tell you exactly what they're doing. They're partying for three solid days, waiting for Chris Berman to ring the phone. And they'll just sit there and go, yeah, what's the, what's the best offensive lineman on the board? Take him. See ya. The tequila's popping. Next. How do you rent a swank mansion for three full days and you're not even going to need the phone until day three? I, I kind of like the way the Rams run things. You're in L.A. Why not pimp? I get it. So let's talk Johnny Juzang. He is not expected back by UCLA. Now, granted, you can tr declare for the draft and come back. Nobody's expecting him to come back, not even UCLA. So he's gone. The 6'7 shooting guard, he spent two years with the Bruins. He led them in scoring each year. He led them with clutch plate in the in March Madness two years ago, led them to the Final Four. That was the first time since 2008 that the Bruins went to the Final Four. Last year, they got to the Sweet 16. So the questions, and there are multiple, the first one is, how big of a loss is this for UCLA? And it could be big. It really could. Look, they keep Jaime Jaquez Junior, right? And they still have a lot of depth on their team. But Jaquez is not a shooting guard. He's a forward. So, you're, and of course, we don't even know what Tiger Campbell, their point guard, is going to do next. They haven't said what they were going to do. Here's the question that UCLA faces. Hake, I mean, um, Juzang was the reason that UCLA was predicted to be a title favorite next year. The moment he declared, a lot of people knocked them down from preseason number one. CBS Sports dropped them from preseason number one all the way to number seven. Okay? So then if you're the Bruins, you go, well, let's look on the depth chart. What do we got? Well, backup sh uh, shooting guard Jake Kynan. Nope. He transferred to uh, Wyoming. Well, okay, well, what about the third string? Peyton Watson. Nope. He left after his freshman year. He also declared for the NBA draft. So now UCLA theoretically would find themselves in a bit of a pickle, wouldn't you say? But they might have a solution. The kids in high school. They recruited a guy named Amari Bailey, who plays for Sierra Canyon over in Chatsworth. He is a 6'5 shooting guard. What does he bring to the table? Well, he's the number two overall recruit in the United States, according to 24-7 Sports. ESPN doesn't think as highly of him. They have him at number five. And oh, by the way, Rivals.com, they have him at number 12. So this is a five-star elite prospect that's coming in. He just hasn't played college ball yet. What we can tell you about him, he does a lot of things that Juzang did. Some things he does even better. But again, he hasn't played a second of college ball yet. They like the fact that he makes plays off the dribble and that like just like Juzang, he likes to play off of screens to get open shots. He's considered a better passer by scouts than Juzang was. Difference between him and Juzang also, Juzang was effective in the half court. This guy likes to create in transition. So he likes to basically run the floor as quick as possible. That might actually be a change for the UCLA offense. They didn't do a lot of fast breaking last year. He's apparently a versatile defender and rebounder, which would also, according to scouts, make him superior to Juzang. However, having said that, he is not known for his jump shot. And Juzang was. So you're getting a little bit of difference. You're making a tiny trade down in terms of whether or not he can shoot the jumper for somebody who's more aggressive, a better defender, and also, just like Juzang, very active off the ball. So there's a lot to like with this guy. So I don't necessarily know how much of a loss UCLA has. Having said that now, if you're a UCLA Bruins fan, what do you think of Johnny Juzang? If I were a UCLA fan, I'd be grateful. I would. See, the Bruins, unfortunately, 
they always hearken back to the John Wooden era, and I don't blame them. That was a tremendous run by a tremendous human being leading the team. Since then, however, UCLA, sometimes they're prominent. More often than not, honestly, they're below Arizona. Coach Mike Cronin is trying to keep them in national prominence, but he needed the horses in order to do it. Juzang was that plow horse. He literally carried the team on his back back to national prominence two years ago. It's because of him that the Bruins now are getting top recruiting classes all over again. So yeah, you revere him. You may not put him up there with the Lou Alcinders and the Bill Waltons. You may not even put him up there with Russell Westbrook, but you do revere him. But what about Ju Zhang's future? Well, let's take a look. I did uh, go through some uh, notes from some NBA scouts who, of course, went off the record. They never go on the record. Most of the mock drafts, if Ju Zhang gets taken at all, it's in the second round. See, he did what most people would say would be the right thing, go back to school after he blew up the country two years ago, come back to school, boost your draft stock. Didn't necessarily happen. He played on a gimpy ankle for a good chunk of the year. Here's what the scouts say about Ju Zhang, what they allegedly say about Ju Zhang. He's not quick. He doesn't get to the rim enough. But they like the fact that he is extremely active on offense. He is constantly in motion on the offense. I mentioned earlier about how effective he was in half court. Yeah, what Ju Zhang does is he looks for people to screen and he'll run around that screen, take the pass, shoot a quick mid-range jumper. That was his game, the mid-range game. He creates offenses in the half court as opposed to transition. So yeah, there's a lot, there's a good stuff uh, to like about him, but how important is he? because there's a lot of wing players in the NBA who can create jump shots off of a screen. I've seen him compared to two different players, Dylan Brooks in Memphis and uh, Duncan Robinson over with the Miami Heat. They both average in double figures, so they're useful. But the problem for him is in terms of the draft, Dylan Brooks was taken midway through the second round and Duncan Robinson wasn't selected at all. So I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm not sure this was a smart idea for Johnny Juzang personally, but what do you think? I'm by no means an expert in drafting prospects. If you enjoyed today's episode, good, I appreciate it. Let me know what you think about Johnny Juzang and the Bruins chances for next year. We put out a new video every day. Thank you for watching. And don't forget to subscribe and like. My name is James. Faithful Angelinos is a Kian Corta El Queso production. Have a good night and a good day.